Hi, this is Robert, and in preparation for our masterclass, I'd like you to watch this short video about the four paradigms. Understanding our paradigms is an important part of understanding how the, res the response chain works, which is the model we're gonna be using during the masterclass, and which you'll continue to, to use to continuously improve your emotional intelligence. So when we think about paradigms, we think about winning the inner victory. See, we don't see the world as it is, but rather we see what we are looking for in the world. What we look for is determined by our personal paradigm, which is the mental filter made up of our core beliefs through which we view the world and make meaning of our experiences. Our minds will function to be right about the core beliefs that make up our paradigms, and they will become self-fulfilling prophecies. It's important to understand that the four paradigms, fear, duty, achievement, and integrity, are qualitatively different. And as we shift from one paradigm to another, a number of dimensions of our experience of life also shift how we view others, how we view ourselves, our motivation, our willingness to take responsibility for ourselves, and more. And we are not locked into one paradigm, but may shift between paradigms at different moments or in different arenas of our lives. Very important to understand that it's not bad to be in one paradigm and good to be in another. In fact, they're all part of our human experience and therefore valuable lessons to learn from each. However, as we do climb up the ladder, from fear to duty to achievement to integrity, we are aligning our lives more and more with the principles that lead to satisfaction and success. So let's take a deeper look at each of the four paradigms. The first is the fear paradigm. And when in fear, life is a battleground. Our awareness and self-esteem are low. Life is painful, and yet we feel powerless to do anything about it. A great deal of emotional energy is required to cope with the stresses of life and so we may face any number of anxiety-related problems, such as ulcers, and hypertension, insomnia, headaches, depression, and even mental illness. Our behavior is governed by have to or afraid not to motivation. Most life tasks are viewed as unpleasant, and so our major purpose becomes surviving or just getting by. Although our life is dominated by negative feelings such as fear, anger, or inadequacy, we have little ability to tolerate such feelings and so act them out in ways that can be destructive to ourselves and others. When become, we become addicted to feeling secure or escaping into addictive pleasures. We are lost in fear and we have little respect for ourselves or others. We see only the faults of people around us. When confronted, we will either fight or run or ignore. Sometimes we live in fear in an active mode, overly hostile, aggressive and harsh. Or we may react from a passive mode, withdrawn, seeking approval, closed or defeated by life. Whether we're reacting from an active or passive mode, we experience ourselves as not okay and life is a hassle. Duty is the paradigm in which most people spend a majority of their lives. The major theme of our lives in this paradigm is accepting and going along with the way things are supposed to be. We are aware of what we are supposed to feel, think, and do, and so live our lives in conformity to that. Our behavior is governed by shoulds and oughts. We are steady, dependable, and technically honest. We want to be good, a per good person, parent, or worker, so we do our share and are basically honorable in our approach to life. Our self-esteem and awareness are moderate. The way we feel about ourselves is dependent upon how we perceive others feel about us. If we sense that we belong and that other people approve of us, we feel at least okay. We are often in duty, addicted to approval from others, and so unconsciously subordinate our own needs and self-expression to what we believe they expect of us. At times, we may feel, find ourselves changing what we think or how we act depending upon how we are, who we are with 
and we may find ourselves conforming to a negative standard of behavior if that's what others are doing. We will usually seek to avoid conflict in relationships. The message we communicate is, I won't hurt or upset you if you won't hurt or upset me. However, we may be quite dogmatic in certain beliefs and reject people perceived as different from us. The theme of the achievement paradigm is personal competence. We are internally motivated to pursue and achieve success. We are not content to simply belong or comply with the program of life, but seek continually to strive for more. For some, the focus is external on gaining success through wealth, power, status, or mastery of some given domain. For others, the focus is more internal on overcoming personal deficiencies and achieving some standard of personal development. No matter which form it is, takes, however, this paradigm is characterized by discipline, hard work, and goal-directed activities. We do have more awareness of our own feelings, needs, wants, and opinions, and so are less influenced by the expectations of others. We are still governed by oughts and shoulds, but they come from within rather than without. We are seeking to bring our performance into alignment with some ideal standard of behavior. We may therefore be quite competitive and perfectionistic, always demanding more of ourselves. Addicted to our ego, we can only feel good about ourselves if our performance is what we think it ought to be. Unfortunately, no matter how much we accomplish, there's always more to do. We may have a sense of never being quite good enough. We seek to project a competent image, want to be in control, and are very uncomfortable displaying signs of weakness. Our relationships sometimes tend to be emotionally distant, partly because we do not want to be too vulnerable and partly because we're more concerned with productivity than with people. Although most people who get things done function in achievement, we often pay a high price in personal stress and self-criticism. The main theme of integrity is developing an inner moral compass and the strength that allows us to be bigger than the circumstances and challenges of our lives. It is subordinating our immediate gratification, fear, desire to please others, duty, and striving to accumulate and accomplish achievement to doing what we believe to be right. When we live from integrity, we cease to see ourselves as acted upon by circumstance, circumstances, events, and others, but recognize ourselves as responsible for all of our actions and reactions. This does not mean that we believe we control everything that happens around us, but that we recognize that our own choice making is the center of both of our personal experience and the circumstances of our lives. Living in this paradigm often requires that we own and work through our own pain and self-defeating reactions from the past. Doing so is not easy for most people and requires great desire and effort. Living in integrity does not mean we give up lessons learned in the paradigms of duty and achievement, but we view them from a different perspective. We no longer see them as the source of our happiness. Our motivation is want to and choose to rather than have to and ought to. We live our lives being conscious of the present and making choices that allow us to either enjoy or learn from each experience. Self-esteem is high and based on a willingness to accept all of who we are. Our relationships are enjoyable. We take good care of our own needs while allowing others to be who they are. We want to win in our interactions with others but we also want them to win too. When things go wrong, we deal with them openly and without manipulation. The world feels like a good and friendly place to be. During our master class, we're gonna dive deeper into the four paradigms and also explore how we respond to certain life situations from each of the four different paradigms.